So guys, Headphones Neil here with my first impression review for Oxygen OS 11 and Android 11 on the OnePlus 8 Pro. So notably, I'm running the Developer Preview 3, which released on um, August 12th or 13th or so. Um, and as a bit of background, I did install it initially as an update or direct upgrade from Android 10. But I had some issues in the update process. I had a boot loop. I did a couple of resets, but I still had a few issues here and there. So I thought I would do a full reinstall from Android 10. So I downgraded my device, did a full reset, installed the update, and then it did another reset. So I'm getting, from my point of view, the cleanest installation of Android 11 Developer Preview 3 from OnePlus. Um, so once I got through the initial um, upgrade process, I did a clean install. So I did not import any apps or backups from the Google Cloud. Um, so all the apps you see here, I installed as a fresh install, logged into everything. Um, and so I've been using it for about 24 hours now. And I want to say that on one hand, I am impressed with the update. But on the other hand, I, it's kind of a weird update as far as the UI layout. So let's jump right into it. So as far as some of the simple stuff, when you long press on, your, um, on the launcher and you go into wallpapers, you now get a few different or you get the usual wallpaper options that you get, but you get a couple of new options that are supposed to update um, throughout the day um, based on the time of day. So the current wallpaper that you see here is supposed to update throughout the day. So I haven't really noticed it too much, but um, granted it's only been a day, so I'm not sure if it's fully implemented or it has, still has bugs to work out or anything like that. But overall, I'm giving that a chance, and I want to say that I think it's changed, but I'm not sure. So it's one of those things I'm still keeping up my eye out for over time. Um, as far as widgets go, you get your usual widgets picker. Um, the one widget that I don't see is the usual weather widget from OnePlus that is, that is supposed to show up down here. But I do see that the OnePlus widget does have a couple new options so I found those pretty nifty I do like this one in the middle a little bit as far as the time date and temperature um, but I am using today weather at the moment so I can get one widget with a date and temperature and another one with a five-day forecast um, going into your home settings you have the usual options here for adding icons swiping down to access the Google um, discover tab um, the launcher layout so you can get um, different options for when you swipe down on your device. Um, you can set your icon pack if you want. Um, your home screen layout options are um, also there. Um, there's a little bit of an overlap issue as far as changing the size, so I can't change the size of the icons just yet. And uh, the same thing when I want to change the grid size. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm chalking that one up to the developer preview that it's um, one of those things that are still being fully implemented but overall as far as that goes it's pretty straightforward as far as um, options that are available so going into the uh, settings you get a few different or you get a brand new layout as far as what you can uh, or what the what um, Android 11 offers as a new UI um, the one thing that you notice or that you notice is that it's a lot different than what you expect from the from a OnePlus UI in the settings menu notably because um, they do have uh, new categories that are not necessarily part of AOSP or the stock Android experience reading reviews online a lot of people are comparing it to um, the Samsung UI the one UI experience so it seems like a straight-up copy um, and then the other thing you notice is that there's a lot of lot more wide open spaces, which I guess from reading online as well is that they're trying to make it more easily easily accessible for the lower half of the screen so that it's easier to access the various content. But from there, that's the biggest change that you really notice. Um, everything else when you go into the settings is pretty much stock. You get the usual um, features and um, options and customizations that you're used to so you can do things like set your screen calibration um, sleep tone adaptive brightness vibrant color effects motion graphics smoothing so all of the options that you're used to are still there but it's in this slightly different uh, layout which I'm still hit or miss on I the biggest problem for me is that um, 
a lot of the thing UI feels oversized and misplaced, which I kind of don't like. But I'm also gonna chalk that up for now to it being the developer preview, and pro some of those UI elements might not be fully implemented as of yet. Um, but you still get this. Your you can pick your um, accent color. You can pick your system icon shape. Um, set your icon pack from here. Set set a uh, font as well. But the one thing to notice is that you get, do get a new clock style. So you have your default clock style, but you can also get an insight mode, which um, lets you see how many times you've unlocked your device, get um, notification icons. Um, you can also get use device usage and um, the, uh, the groove updates every time you unlock your device. So the bigger the groove, the more you've unlocked your device. So a pretty nifty, um, lock screen UI as far as I can tell and I actually kind of like it I set that for now to see how it works over time and I'm kind of curious to see how it does progress as I unlock my device and use it um, more and more but um, and I want to say I like that one the most at the moment so we'll see how it goes as I mentioned um, your fingerprint and then you still have your things like your uh, fingerprint animation so if you want to set Cosmos, you have your horizon light. So when you get a notification, the color that shows up on the sides of your and or the edges of your screen. Um, custom is oh, that's a couple of customization buttons and gestures are um, mostly the same, but the one that you do get the option that you now get also is the ability. Well, actually, for the double tap, I'm not sure if that was an option before or not. But the option you do now get when you press and hold your um, power button is whether you want to see um, the power menu or the voice assistant. So you can pow hold down on your um, power button for the voice assistant. And when that is enabled, you can press, you'd have to hold the volume down or power button in order to access your um, power menu. Um, and on a related note, now when you hold down on your um, power button, you can also control your connected devices. So um, if you want to add controls for Chromecast and things like that, that's now an option. You have your screenshot button at the top, and then you have your power button that does provide now bigger buttons to power off your device and restart your device, which for me would have been, as far as the lower UI, um, premise on the system settings I would have preferred that to be on the bottom so it's easier to access but on the flip side and the slightly less um, option that I'm thinking is that they wanted to put that, at that put that at the top so that you don't accidentally click your power button and restart or power down especially if you're in the middle of something or you accidentally hit the emergency button by putting it at the top it's something that you have to actively go into control so I have it set to this power menu because I do have my home button long press set to opening assistance so holding the power button is one of those things where I would have to readjust my hand um, and since I don't really hold down the power button very often it is um, better to for me I feel like it's better to just leave it as is, as it is and then from here the rest of the settings are pretty much um, straightforward if you use a oneplus device then you kind of know what to expect um so overall that's really about it for the ui um and then as i mentioned um as far as the oversized ui goes you see that um the a lot of the ui seems a lot bigger so the, there's a lot more spacing and the notifications take a little bit more space um i don't have any um, chat messages at the moment to show off but um, chat conversations are now grouped into the, their own little notification area so instead of having separate notification or I mean you still get separate notifications per app but rather than have them individually lined up and in the mix of your other notifications they're now grouped together in uh, your notification drawer so they're easier to get to and you're more focused on just conversations and they're easier to see so I kind of like that um, other than that, as far as issues I've had while using the developer preview, the biggest two issues I had, uh, or not the biggest, but initial issues I noticed when setting up the device is that Netflix did not work out of the box and Disney Plus did not work out of the box. I have a feeling that that relates to the um, security or the DRM contenting related to installing a developer preview and the developer preview not being certified as of yet so the fix around or not the fix but the way around that is that you can download the APK 
Um, and as you saw from that notification earlier, you can go to APK Mirror, install the APKs for Disney Plus and Netflix, and get those working. And as far as I can tell, there's no issues with actually using them. Videos, I haven't tested Disney Plus yet, but I have tested Netflix and um, playing video works, downloading works, um, casting to the Chromecast works. So overall, the apps seem to be working fine. It's just probably a DRM issue tied to installing it from Google Play. Netflix, I want to say, is because it's pre-installed as part of the um, developer preview. So I think there's part of some certification that's going on with that as far as why that doesn't work. Um, and I'll get to that whole pre-installed bit in a little bit because that's not really a, it's more of a he neither here nor there thing. But um, I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then the only other feature that does not work as of yet is Google Play. Um, I'm not sure why it doesn't work. It's just that it couldn't give a couldn't connect to set it up, and I figure that's it's, it's related to the whole developer preview part. Um, and if you've ever been rooted um, on an Android device, you know that um, you have to. There's a all sorts of workarounds that you have to get in order to get Google Play working related to being rooted. So I think it's because it's an unofficial build. They're not. It's not certified as of yet in order to get that working um, and I think that's going to have an issue as far as um, related to buying stuff on the device um, in the next couple of weeks while um, until the beta release is working or even in the next couple of months until the final build is released so as far as Google Pay is concerned there's not I don't use it too often so I don't know that I'm going to have too much of an issue with not using it for a couple of weeks um, at least or maybe even the next month but we shall see um, and if, it, if any case, in any case um, OnePlus has offered a way to downgrade back to um, Android 10 so if I do find that I need to use it a lot more than I think then there is that as an option um, but overall I want to say that the developer preview is pretty well done. Um, the other thing to notice is that you'll see um, a couple of the uh, OnePlus apps have gotten a um, overhaul and refresh UI, so you'll see that the gallery app has um, um, options to swipe back and forth as far as the UI, so it looks a little bit bigger um, as far as the camera app goes. Um, it's mostly the same as far as I could tell. I guess there were some UI elements that have changed so for example taking a picture um has a or i was testing it with the uh, i was testing it with the 48 pixel 48 megapixel mode as far as the animation when you're taking a picture that is capturing a picture so um you now it's easier to see when um the picture is taken so before i think the button would just gray out on android 10 now you get the progress bar around the um shutter button um, and then as far as um, lens is now I think it's I see now that it's at the bottom of the screen I think before it might have been at, I don't think that I saw it in the camera app I know it was in the gallery app before um, other than that the camera app is okay uh, the weather app does have uh, um, updated UI I think game space is um, Um, about the same as far as um, that UI. Uh, I disabled the clock and I'm using the Google clock and Google contacts. I think those are about the same. Um, file manager and the files app have not been updated so um, I don't know that there's any updates as far as that goes. Um, otherwise it's pr a pretty straightforward update. You um, um, you, if you've used OnePlus devices before, you kind of know what to expect. So the biggest um, change is the settings UI and some of the general UI not elements in the in the notification drawer. So I want I'm kind of hoping to see what they what happens in the developer preview, um, and just to see if they tighten up some of those UI elements. And if they change some of that to make it uh, flow a little bit better and then otherwise I kind of the only thing that um, is not working for me as I said is Google Pay so once that's fixed um, it will be a pretty complete UI update um, so that's really all there is for this particular review so um, to summarize my first impressions overall pretty good um, UI has been or the UI in the um, 
usability is good stability is good um, I don't know that I've had many or any app crashes or anything like that there's random system sluggishness and compared to when I first installed it when it first came out doing a clean install has or I did notice that there was initially a sluggishness and um, delay in using the touch screen um, but doing this fresh install and over the past couple of 24 hours um, I have noticed that it's a lot smoother um, for the most part there is random times when it's kind of a little bit sluggish but um, it's one of those things that it is a developer preview not a final build or not even a beta build so there are going to be random issues like that um, I did try to use Nova Launcher for a while, but I did notice that when using a video app or going back to the home screen after navigating around a little bit, it does not seem to want to hold the default launcher, even though it's, Nova Launcher is set as the default. So um, we'll see if things like that get fixed as well. Um, but overall, that's it's a pretty good um, device for or a bit, pretty good update for a. Uh, daily driver especially if you do not use Google Play and if you don't mind sideloading uh, Netflix and Google Play or sorry Netflix and Disney Plus um, and the weird thing is apps like Google Play Movies and Prime Video and HBO Max do work so I think the DRM versioning that those apps use versus Disney Plus and Netflix are different or there's some hiccup in that process so um, Things like that are kind of finicky at the moment, but I can only expect it to get better over time. And I'm kind of curious to see what they do with all this extra space um, at the top because um, having it, I mean, it does. it is easier to get to the Wi-Fi and network and the Bluetooth options, um, but having it, uh, having all that extra space is also kind of, I don't know, I just don't like having that extra space. I figure if it's there, use it. Although when you scroll up, um, it does get used. So um, I guess we'll kind of see how they um, um, fix that and take that from there. So um, uh, that's really all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can always leave a comment on this video, which is at youtube.com slash patel in zero one. The Twitter account is patel n0 or at patel n01 so you can uh, comment on the post there or send me a dm uh, the website is patel n01.com for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff but that is all there is for this particular review and first impressions video thanks for tuning in and until next time